So today we're going to be breaking down the infamous Iman Godzi style. In this video, we're going to break down one of his animations and actually recreate it. If you're going to want to stick around and check this out, this is going to be a very long video. So make sure you guys hold on to your hats and don't let go. So now that we're in Da Vinci, we're not going to waste any time here. We have this compound clip of Iman of the clip we're going to be creating, and then we're getting a fusion clip. Make sure this is dragged out just as far as the clip of Iman, and then we're going to disable his clip. Then we're going to jump into the fusion page. If you guys are not familiar with fusion, um, this is not going to be a beginner tutorial. So go check out a tutorial on maybe Casey Ferris's channel. Uh, he's great for this stuff, but Next, we're going to grab a background node and connect this to the media out. Make sure that the alpha is turned all the way down. I save my projects like crazy, so you're going to see me doing that a lot. And in this video, I'm going to link all the resources for this video in the description below. So what you guys are going to need, you're only going to really need one thing, and that's going to be a search icon. Uh, SVG file, um, which I'll have linked below. And you're also going to need a Google screenshot like this. Um, just a simple screenshot of a new tab. And that's it. So I'm going to bring in the compound clip Vimin. I like to uh, look at it in the second viewer to help me recreate this animation as we go. So I'm going to hit F2. I'm going to rename it to Iman. And now we got it as Iman. Drag that up to the second viewer. And now we are going to care about this later. I just wanted to show you guys. So we'll go ahead and delete that. I like to structure my nodes, get them all nice and arranged to the grid. So we're going to arrange tools to grid. Now it kind <clears> of <throat> drags in place. So now what we're going to be recreating, well, let me drag this media out node in there is we're going to drag this out to the frame in which the search bar stops moving. And what I mean by that is you're going to want the frame that it stops moving on the Y axis. So up and down, not on the Z axis, which is like forward and backward in 3D space. So you're going to want to bring it to, if you cut it, the clip out exactly like I did it's going to be frame 39 ish and next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab another background node we're going to connect this to our background we are going to just grab a rectangle mask attached to this background and the cool thing about having it on your second viewer is you can actually almost match this rectangle mask up identically to his rectangle mask. So what you're going to do is you're going to start playing around with the width and you're going to play around with the height and then the center value. And then we can adjust the corner radius um, to make it look more rounded. And so now we're starting to get something more similar to what he has on the screen. So you're just going to have to play around with this and adjust this a little bit. Um, we're not going to get it exactly precise, like I said, for the sake of time, but something pretty dang similar. Like, that's pretty good. So now I'm just going to save it and... Now what we are going to do is we're actually going to bring down the transparency on this a bit. And I'm also going to copy his color. We're going we're to steal a little bit, guys. Um, but, I mean, if you guys want to, you can recreate this entirely from scratch. But we're just going to make it easy on ourselves. So I'm going to take this dropper, I'm going to drag it in, and it's going to take the color and make it exactly like his. I'm also going to bring down this opacity again, because that's what we were in the process of doing before. Um, 
now we need these like grayish lines around the side. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and we're going to paste this. And so we're going to get that out of the way. And now we're going to bring this up, drag it into our merge to create another merge. And we are going to change it from solid and unselect that. And then we're going to bring up the border width just a little bit. So now we have a bit of a border on here. Okay. And now we're going to make the border color. So I'm just going to take off show view controls for a second. And we're going to make the background color for this one, this gray color right here. So if you did all that right, you should have a similar looking thing to his. And it should come out somewhat like this. So now that we got this we can move on and actually focus on the rotation of this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the very last frame that it starts rotating in, which is going to be This one as well so what we're going to do is we're going to create a we're gonna hit shift space and we're gonna create a dve node and then we're gonna hit the background again and we're gonna create a transform node i'm not sure if we're gonna be using both these or just one but i like to have them both there just in case um so whoops I'm just going to do some adjusting, make this look a little bit more clean uh, so that way it's not as distracting. And then um, actually we're going to move these two nodes uh, to a different spot. So I'm going to take them off the node graph by selecting them, holding shift and clicking and dragging. And I'm going to actually disconnect these as well. Um, because we're going to do this in a different place. And we are just going to drag it up. We're going to bring in another merge node, connect that to our node flow here, connect these two to this one. And now we can reconnect uh, these nodes on here. Whoops. So I'm going to select them, drag them over, hold shift. Let go. Now the transforms on DV is not going to do the same thing. Shift, let go. Just going to have to play around with these because as you can see, they're kind of creating a mess of this, uh, graph here or whatever this is. Um, so now that we got that, we're going to actually be focused on the rotation of this thing. So that's why we kind of brought this DVE node in. If you're not familiar with the DVE node, it allows you to get like this uh, almost like 3D-ish looking stuff on 2D objects. So what we're going to do is just make it on that last frame again. So 40, 41, doesn't matter, same thing. Um, then we're going to keyframe everything in here besides perspective just because it's easier than knowing exactly what to do off the top of my head and then we're going to also come into the center value we're going to keyframe that on the transform and then we're going to come back to when it does a flip beforehand so right here on frame 33 for me we're going to do the very same thing come and keyframe all these things again. You don't really need this top one here unless you really want to do something with that, but I'm not going to do that. So then we're going to come to the next rotate 
which is about here. Same thing, keyframe, keyframe everything, keyframe the transform. We're gonna go over to the very first frame that it comes in that you can see this thing. Keyframe everything. And then lastly, we are going to come to the keyframe where this box doesn't even appear. So frame 17 for me, keyframe everything. So for this to work out properly, we are going to need to um, start from the last frame is probably going to be easiest. And we get one, two, and three flips in here. So we're going to need to do a total of 540 degrees. Um, because 180 degrees is a flip. So at this point in time, you can probably see that you can't see anything in the viewer. That's because we don't have a background node. We don't have anything in the background on this merge. So a couple things we could have done, but I'm just going to bring in a background, make it alpha. Now we can see something in the viewer again. So this is in a pretty accurate spot, I believe. Uh, I can just double check by clicking on this mask here and selecting it. I can just click on this mask here and turn on the viewer. And now I can see that it's in a pretty good spot. Um, so coming to look at this, I realized that I might have keyframed the wrong frames uh for the last rotation we're actually going to do frame 38 you may have already keyframed this properly but i'm just going to go ahead and deselect that and for the sake of this with the way that i lined up the shape we're going with frame 38 so i'm going to re-keyframe all this stuff and then we're going to take off this last keyframes and voila, now we got it like we want. We got this in the correct spot. Now we're gonna work on the actual flipping motion of the shape here. So degree, we're gonna have 180 degree and we're going to have a 360 degree um, point on here. You'll understand what I mean in a sec. So. We're gonna be rotating on the x-axis. I'm gonna leave this last one on zero. Then we're gonna do the first flip. And the first flip we're going to set to uh, negative 180. So now we got this on negative 180. We're actually going to come to the uh, center value and we're going to bring it down so that way it's in a similar position here as the other one. And then we're going to come back here to this second flip. Um, we're going to do negative 360. And I misspoke. We're going to do negative 540 in the beginning, I believe. So now we're just going to bring this down a bit more. And then we're going to come back to the original one at the beginning. We're going to do negative 540. And same thing, we're going to drag down this rectangle to about the same position. So this hovers a little bit over, this is a little bit under the rectangle. So uh, do, 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 just trying to figure some things out here. Okay, so all said and done, 
I'm going to take off these keyframes on the initial one when it's not in view. And I'm just going to rekey it. And then I'm going to drag this thing off screen. Save real quick. And now if we play this animation, we can see what we got. Not perfect, but it looks pretty dang similar. Um, we're actually going to come in here and go to the spline tab before we forget. And we're going to click this guy here, show only selected tool, hit the DVE and make sure everything's selected. Then we're gonna click this guy to view everything in frame. I have mine set to auto smoothing for this. Just gonna hit control A and we're gonna hit S for smooth or auto easing. Um, so now if we come back and we replay it, uh, it will be less linear for you guys. Mine was on auto ease. So just watch, boom, snaps into place. So the next thing that we're gonna be working on is getting these stripes in here of gray. So how we're gonna do that is we're actually going to move all our nodes over to the side. And now we're gonna add in another merge and then we'll just connect this merge and connect this merge to the transform. And after connecting that to the transform, grab a background, connect that to merge four, and we're going to steal Iman's color again. So we're gonna go with this gray and it doesn't have to be exact. Now we're gonna actually take the mask that we had over here and we are going to copy it and paste it over here, connect it to our background. And next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is just put in two rectangle masks. So we're gonna actually untick the solid option on here and we are going to copy and paste this node down here and connect, connect it to merge four. So that way this background that we're gonna be creating stays within this rectangle mask. So what we're going to do is first, we're gonna make sure that this is ticked off as solid. And next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to come in here. We're gonna change this to add on both these. And now we're gonna actually just disable one of these with D and come into the one that's not disabled and we will recreate this part over here. So I'm going to bring down the width. Actually, it lines up pretty good with that top one. So I might just do that top one. So bring down the width a little bit more. And you're going to come to find that you actually need to go at a negative angle. So the opposite of what this is showing you, what you would think it would be in order to get this. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit more and play around with it till it looks somewhat similar to this. And now that we got that in place, we're just gonna undisable this other one and we're gonna do the very same thing. I'm gonna come over, bring down the width, bring it down more. That's probably pretty good. And now we're going to adjust this to whatever, negative 11.6, negative 11.6, Pretty good. And now we're actually going to adjust the points just like we did with the rotation. We're actually going to keyframe from where this moves from over here to over here or vice versa. So we're gonna find the very first frame that we see this in here, which is frame maybe this one right here, you can kind of see it poking through. And we're just gonna pop a transform node right below the background. So we'll have transform. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a keyframe and then we're going to come up to where it goes 
all the way across the screen. So about here, make another keyframe. And so we're going to come back to the beginning. We're going to drag on the X until you can barely see this guy poking through. I'm going to back it up one frame and I'm going to take it completely off. And then I'm going to come to the keyframe where it goes all the way across. And we're just going to drag this off the screen. And if you did everything correctly, you should have something like this. But like I said, we got to actually come in there and just adjust the spline in here to make it a bit smoother for you guys. Mine's going to automatically be smooth, like I said before, because I have auto uh, ease on. Uh, actually, it didn't even work. So we're just going to hit, make sure you have your transform selected, then hit control A and hit S for smooth. You can drag on these handles if you want to make it smoother. It's up to you guys what you guys are really looking for. If you want it really precise, you can. Um, but that's what we got. We can come back in here and we can give this a uh, we can give this a shine. So we can type in we can type in glow. And now we have a nice similar looking shine that he's got there. Um, let me just make sure everything's going smoothly. Yep, so now you got a nice shine in there. Whoops. Looks pretty similar. And now we're going to actually focus on the Google side of things. This part is a little bit more annoying, a little bit more complicated, but we're going to conquer it. So this is where your screenshot of Google comes into play. So let me just do a little bit of organization and then we'll get on that. A little bit of housekeeping. Okay, so now that everything's in line, we are going to be moving on to the Google screen. So I'm gonna drag on my screenshot of Google and let me just name this real quick with F2. Google screen shot, and we're going to drag this into our node flow. All right, now that we got this in here, it looks like it needs to be adjusted a little bit because it doesn't quite fit our composition. So I'm just gonna pop a resize node on top of here. And now we are going to just simply mask out the Google um, if you have a white background like me, you're going to have to follow along with me. If you have a black background, I recommend using the Delta gear for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Google screen and I am going to come up here and I am going to mask out each and every letter. So I'm going to bring down the width. I'm going to get this G. like we're taking in a little bit of something else so just make sure and like i said before we're going to do a keyer so i'm going to search for we're going to use Luma because I have a white background. This is the best way that I found to do this. And I'm going to actually take out, do the saturation channel. And we're just going to play around with this. 
It's not going to be perfectly crisp at the edges. It's going to look a little bit better if you have a black background. Um, I had a buddy recreate this same effect, um, but I don't use dark mode, so this is what we got. You won't have the colored letters, I don't think, either if you do it that way. So we'll just bring up the blur slightly, and now I'm going to copy this, paste it, and we're going to do that six times. So we got three, four, five, six. Drag them off each other. Drag out this media out node. And now we're going to control S to save. And I'm going to drag these into the pipeline. So let me just do it one by one and adjust this rectangle mask to get this O. We're gonna do a micro adjustment here, whoops. And honestly, since it's an O, I might just copy and paste this one. So I'll get rid of this rectangle mask, paste it, boom. Drag this over to the other O, bring it into the pipeline, don't forget. And then I'll connect this next one. Let me see what we got. So the G is a little bit tricky. I'm going to actually use a polygon mask for that. So I'm going to get rid of that and drag in a polygon mask. So I'm just going to bring this up to our... Uh, well, actually, I don't even need to. So let me just select this polygon mask. And now we're just going to make a shape around the G just to enclose it. So we got that. Drag that out in a sec. Boom. All right, so we got our G. Now we're going to work on the next one, which is the L. And we are going to move this over to the L. This one's going to be a bit tricky too, I think, just because of how uh, narrow it is. But maybe not. It didn't put up much of a fight. It put a bigger fight yesterday when I was working on it. All right, so now that that's done, we have the last one, which is the E. Connect that to your pipeline. And now we are going to come over to the E. Got a little micro adjustment here. Save that up. Don't want anything to happen to it. Okay, so now that we got the Google out of the way, um, so now that we got the Google out of the way, I'm actually going to be putting in the background. But first, let me disconnect all these merge nodes and with click and shift. And now we're going to put another merge down here and we're going to connect it to merge 10. Just going to save it just in case. Again, always put a background on these merges uh, because you'll forget and make it have an alpha background. So that way you can see it in the viewer. Okay, so now that we got that, we will bring in the background that we got here so with that we're just going to grab a background node we're going to connect it we are going to select with the dropper the background here and then i know in the end that we're going to need to crank this up because there's going to be some motion and on the z-axis and some rotation. So I'm just gonna do that now before I forget. We're going to hold shift, transform. We're just gonna crank this background all the way up five. 
looks good. Maybe throw some uh, film grain on here or something similar to what he has. You'll have to play around with it to get it how you want. He might be using some sort of overlay or something. But um, now that we have that, we're actually going to merge this on under instead of over. So come in the merge, select under, and now we have a bit of an off color happening here. So I want to go ahead and go back in and fix that real quick. So that's going to be somewhere around here. Oh, let me make sure first. Okay, so that's the outline. There, now we have that uh, darker color there. Bring down the uh, alpha. That might have been what was causing this, bringing down the alpha, actually. So we'll make it look pretty good. And now we're going to work on the Google letters. So what we're going to do is we're just going to scale these bad boys up first. So I'm going to bring in a transform node and we are going to scale these things to the moon because they don't look like they're the right size right now. So let's come to a scene where all the Google letters are in here. We're going to scale it up, bring it down. Don't worry that the screen is kind of like slanted right now. We're going to fix that too. Um, so that looks about good. That's, that's pretty good. So now we're going to actually come in here and animate the letters. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a DVE node below all these letters here. So let's start with this first one. Um, we're going to have DVE. And I'm just going to disable all these for now so that way I can just see the G. And what we're going to do is similar to the rotation of the thing earlier, the search bar, we are going to come to the very first frame where G is off screen. And we're going to just keyframe everything. And then we're going to go forward one frame when it's on screen. And then we're going to come to where it kind of like locks in place a bit. Just right here. Whoops. Oh, shoot. And now we are going to do the, now we're going to lock the G in place. So got the G right here in its final destination. And we're going to come back to the first frame when it's off screen. So it rotates on the y-axis I want to say so we're going to actually come back and pull this g off the screen the center value and now let's see what happens if we get a full spin in here so we'll set this to 360 to start Oh, excuse me. We're just going to have to remove these keyframes on the next frame first. And now we get something like this. We 
which is totally not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a keyframe somewhere in the middle here of where I see the G and we're going to drag it back in to about the same place and now we can look at the animation, see what we kind of got. So it's not perfectly beautiful, but it gets the job done for the sake of this video. If you want to come in here and make a lot more adjustments, I usually, when I do these things, I keyframe literally every single frame up until it's done to get it looking a lot smoother. Um, but we just, we don't have time for that. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to smooth everything out with uh, control A and S. And now we can come back here and look at what that's done. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to do the O. So we're just going to pop a DVE node underneath this. And then we're going to enable the O. And we're going to come back to the very first frame where we can start to, uh, where we can't see the O, I mean. And that's right here. We're going to keyframe everything. We're going to come to the keyframe where it snaps into place, which is about right here. Then we're going to come back to this one and the O kind of goes like this on its back and goes up. So we're going to consider that a negative 90 degrees on the X. And then we can kind of watch this guy snap into place. So I'm actually going to yet again play with the pivot to kind of get it into place. So about right there, probably need to do a couple keyframes on this one. I'm going to actually move it over because my mask is a little bit different. So we'll do like right here. And now we're going to just smooth out the keyframes again. So we're going to hit control A, S. Now we get something like this. And then we're going to come in, drop a DVE node below the next O. So we're going to do DVE and do the very same thing. And we're going to repeat this process through and through. The trickiest one is actually going to be the L, if I'm remembering properly, the L or the E. So we're going to come into the first frame that we can't see it, which is this one, keyframe everything. Whoops. Come into the keyframe where it snaps into place, which is right here. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through that same process, except this time the O looks like it's doing the same thing as the last O. So we're going to do negative 90 on the X. And then we're going to come up to maybe like somewhere in the middle, get it looking the same. So we'll change the pivot over here. The Y goes up. Yep. 
and we will make the pivot over here the same thing. Boom, kind of clicks into place. So that looks pretty good. I think that's the best one we got so far. Probably the easiest, but the best. Um, then we're gonna do shift. We're gonna do DVE for the G and we're gonna enable this merge, same thing. Come to the first frame where you can't see the G, just right here, DVE, check all these boxes. Come to where it snaps into place. Right here. And now we are going to come to like the middle, like we do. So this one's curving in like that. So that would be our Y axis. So it's probably another negative 90, I want to say. So negative 90. And let's see what this looks like. This one we barely are going to even have to touch. We're just going to tweak the X pivot. And we're going to come back here, tweak it again. So just unclick and click your keyframe. It looks like there's maybe a slight amount of movement in there. So maybe I'll just move the center value over a little bit over here and then it'll come in a little bit more like it's moving. Okay, so now we're gonna do the very same thing. Come into the spline, control A, S, smooth out our keyframes. Come over to the next one, DVE. And now we are going to be working on the L. This is like the hardest or one of the hardest ones. So we're going to have to do quite a bit of tweaking. So we're going to come to the first keyframe where we can't see the L. Which is right here. And we're going to come to the last keyframe. All right, so the last keyframe here. And this one, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to tweak a little bit all throughout. So we're going to come to maybe the middle here and can't see it. We got to enable our merge. Um, got to see what this is doing here. So this is again going on the y-axis might be going opposite so we'll just do a uh, 90 degrees this time oh I forgot we gotta drag this bad boy off screen So let me just reset this real quick so I can see what I'm doing. Or no, I'll just, I'll drag this off screen. And then see how this thing comes in. All 
Oh, not too bad. That went way smoother than when I made it yesterday. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to move on. We'll go to the E and finally finish this bad boy off. Turn on the merge node. Control S. Hate to lose this progress. And we're going to find the first frame where we can't see the E, which is right here. And the last keyframe right here. And now we're going to drag the E off the screen. First, let me figure out what flip it's doing. So it's doing a similar thing to the Y or to the L. So we're going to do a 90. See what that looks like. So let me try changing the, uh, not the pivot. We want the, uh, center value here. Realistically, the E is supposed to be right here right now, but we're just going to push it out a little bit. So... We're going to have to play around with a couple things here. It's not going to be easy for us. So we are going to Look how the letters come in. All right, so yeah, I'm going to make some adjustments to this one. We're going to come in here. We're going to look at how this is kind of looking right now. Oh, you're supposed to be able to see the L. Oh, that's not happening, though. The E and the L kind of come together. Maybe I'll drag this in closer. Try to play around with the L a little bit. Get that close. Get that closer. Now let's see what we got here. We still got the E kind of like rotating behind the L. It's almost like it goes one way and then starts rotating back the other way. So I don't know, I'm going to flip it uh, to negative 180 maybe, and maybe that will give us a different uh, sort of look for things. Oh, 
Okay, so now if we readjust the E right here, good, good, good. We just got to adjust this first frame now, it looks like. All right, so that's pretty good. It's obviously not an exact replica, but you guys kind of get the gist of this. Uh, probably at this point, you'll have to tweak a lot of these settings to get them perfect and play around with a lot of keyframing and whatnot in order to get things exactly right. Um, but overall, I think you guys will think that this is pretty good. So we're going to move on. We are going to move to the last portion of this uh, thing here, getting the words on here, zooming in on the screen, shifting the screen, and uh, yeah. So let's jump into getting the words on the screen. This one should be pretty easy. Um, I don't know what font Imangazi uses, but we're just going to use uh, Rubik. Um, so make sure you guys go ahead and download the Rubik font if you don't have it offline. And we are going to do, get it to the screen where I can see his font. We're going to say how to make 10,000 dollars per month. And we're going to merge this in here. And we're going to, oh, that didn't work. Uh, so we are going to move this over, add in a merge node, connect this merge to this merge, connect the text to here, connect this to the transform, move this over, move it up a little bit the text boom so how to make ten thousand dollars a month so we're gonna make that smaller move it up and now we're gonna move this down more And we're actually going to jump into the Fusion page because we are going to be doing some character level uh, styling on this to make it look uh, similar to this font here. So we're going to jump into Fusion. Oh, we're in the Fusion page. Wow, it's been a long day. Okay, so <laughs> um, we are going to do some character level styling here. So right click on this box, character level styling. And now we're going to select how to make, and we're going to change this from bold to uh, regular or light. And we're going to go with, uh, we're going to go with light. So now that we got that, and then we're going to select this, we're going to bring this down to semi bold. And now it looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make this right on. Uh, we got to finish off the letters because as a student, student. So now I got to actually bring the overall font down. Looks pretty good. Okay. Don't forget to save, control S. And we're going to get this uh, search bar thing over here, but we're going to write on the text first. So first frame that the letters come in, frame before it, we're going to set a keyframe. And there's like this uh, pause for a sec. So we're going to get the first frame of the pause. Boom. 
month, drag it down a little bit. So come to the last frame of the pause. Right here. And then we're going to come to the end. When student gets typed out, drag this all the way up. So now it's going to look something like this. And I saw some something weird happening in here. Oh, right. So our first keyframe uh, has to be at zero, which it's not. So now we'll come up to the spline tab and we'll hit control A, S, smooth things out, spline. And we will come in, check it out. Looks pretty good. Nice. And next thing that we want to do is we're going to get that little uh, search icon in here. So I linked an SVG file down in the description. And you're going to want to download that unless you have another search icon that you want to use. And then we're going to come up here to Fusion, Import, SVG, and we're going to go to I'm in Godzi, do this as a student. I mean, you guys have your own file location. The search icon, we're going to bring that in here. Uh, just got to find it. It's over here. Whoops. Going to drag this out and over. And now that we got that, uh, we are going to drag this into the midst of things. So we're going to need another merge node. So we'll go ahead and bring that to the foreground. Uh, bring this down a little bit so we can disconnect, connect it to this merge node. And then you just got to connect your merge to the transform. So we're just going to move this transform over so that way everything lines up. And now we have this massive search icon on the screen. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put a transform node below it. Um, the cool thing about SVG files is you can scale this thing to the moon. It doesn't really matter. This thing will get as big or as small as you want it to get. And it's never going to get really uh, grainy or uh, pixelated. So what we're going to do now is we are going to drag this into place. Um, I believe we can hold S and drag out or on these sides here to get it to the right size. And then we'll just put it in place here. And we'll just drag this side again. Get it to the right place. Pretty good. And we'll just steal this color again. So we will drag this up, double click to open it up, come to the background surrounding the uh, magnifying glass itself and open it up. Uh, so my camera just died. So um, where we left off is we were doing the search icon so we're just going to change the color of that. So I'm going to come over here to this background and we're going to drag it on here to get the color of that search icon. And now everything is coming into place. We got everything up until the Google. And now we're just going to need to work on the different zooming effects and tilts of the screen. So we're going to come over to the first section that the screen starts tilting. Let me just move all this out first. And we are going to uh, drag in a DVE node. So now that we got the DVE node, we're going to look for when the screen starts tilting. So right here, it's 
Starts moving in. All right, so somewhere around here, it starts moving in. So we're just going to start keyframing everything. And next thing that we are going to do is we're going to come to the part where it stops zooming in and also stops rotating, which is... right about here. So we're going to keyframe that as well. And now we're just going to make a shift in the screen. So it's actually going to be a shift on the Y axis. And we're just going to tilt that like this. So we can see the Google start to tilt right there. And then we are going to zoom in. So we're going to do a Z move to zoom in. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to grab a transform node next. And this is what I'm going to do the move in. We're going to actually do a size up on the screen. So... Let me just come to these keyframes, the ending keyframe, you're going to want to keyframe size. And then we're going to come to the beginning keyframe and we're going to also keyframe size. We'll leave it the same on the beginning one, but we're going to zoom in on the end. So we're just going to scale this up. So ours is probably going to be bigger than Iman's, which is pretty good. It's We'll just leave it at 1.38. And now we're going to select both these. We're going to cut up to the spline, and we're going to smooth them out. Control A, S, smooth them out. And now let's play through our animation and show you what we got so far. All right, so the last thing that we got to do is we got to do that little twisty, crazy stuff and uh, transition through here, and we're, we're done, guys. So let's finish this bad boy off strong. What we're going to do is I'm going to add in a, another DVE node here, and let me name this one. So this is going to be the screen twister. Um, and now we are going to come to the first frame that the screen starts twisting. So I believe it's the frame after the one we just keyframed. Nope, it's two frames after. So we're just going to keyframe everything. And then we're going to come to the end. Keyframe everything. Now we're going to go to this, the last frame here. And we're going to actually make the twist of the screen, which is going to be on the Z axis. So it's going to be negative Z. And we are going to move our pivot. So that way we go, when we move on the Z axis, we're going to move right through this bar right here. Actually, we're not going to move the pivot. I change of plans. We're going to move the center X <coughs> and come through here. So 
So just tweak that however you want to get it in place. And I'm just going to save here like always. We've done way too much work to let it go to waste. And um, now what we're going to do is we are going to create a mask for this. So lastly, we're going to make this hollowed out and then zoom through it. So the last things that we need to do is bring in a background node. We're going to connect this to the transform, make another merge, change this to alpha. We're going to actually come over here to this rectangle mask. We're going to copy it and then we're going to paste it below this merge, connecting it to the mask section. And then we're going to create another rectangle on the outside of it. And we're going to bring the width and the height all the way up. And then once that is all the way up, take this DVE and transform. We're going to copy and paste it. I'm going to connect this to the DVE, connect the transform to the merge. And we're just going to move these nodes in, in a structural way. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be keyframing the leveling of this thing, but it's not going to work unless your background here is actually the background of this merge. So we're going to hit control T making it the background of the merge. And now we're going to keyframe out the blend of this. So we're going to blend this circle mask or well, now it's a circle, but uh, rectangle mask. So we're going to come to the first part where you can see it's starting to not blend through, which is around 135 before it starts blending. And then we're going to go to the end where you can fully see through it, which is maybe, I don't know, I would say frame 145 ish for me and we're just going to crank this down to zero on the level so now we're going to get something like this other than the fact that our animation resets there um it looks good we are going to now just keyframe it and smooth it out so Control a s and then we are going to come in here and we are going to zoom through. So we're going to set some uh, keyframes on this guy, this DVE node. And then we are going to come up to the end of where we actually zoom through it, have the keyframes from earlier, unclick them, recheck them. The way it resets the position. And now we're going to actually fully zoom through. So we're going to bring down the Z, but I don't really want it going all over the place like it does right now. So I'm going to just So I'm going to manipulate this to keep it moving down in the right spot. So we're going to go through, zoom through, and boom. All right, boom. So now that that's done, we're pretty much all set. Last thing we got to do is just uh, make sure that this background is uh, blending at the right time. So... We'll go to when it's fully blended in on uh, maybe scene uh, on frame 57-ish. We'll blend it in. So we'll come back to this background node with the transform and film grain, put a keyframe on blend, and then we'll come back to when you can't see it at all. Crank blend all the way down, go to the spline tab, 
come over here, smooth it out. And boom, we're done. Let's look at the animation. So after watching it, I noticed that the E was kind of coming on the screen uh, way too early. So we actually forgot to keyframe that off the screen. So I'm going to come back in here and adjust the E, but then we're done. So And now we're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it was a bit of a long one, but if you did drop a like, it really helps me out. And I'm going to be posting a lot more tutorials on DaVinci Resolve. And if this gets 10,000 views, Maybe there's going to be another I'm on Godzi video. So make sure you guys drop a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe.